Hello friends, welcome to the second part in my series on the cholinergic system. In this part, I'm going to address why the Institute of Medicine only realized that choline was an essential nutrient in 1998. The reason is because choline is a conditionally essential nutrient. So what that means is, for example, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, named after scurvy, by the way, that's what ascorbic is, um, vitamin C cannot be produced by humans. It can be by most animals, such as cats, for example. They don't need to uh, digest uh, vitamin C directly, but we absolutely need to. We cannot what's called de novo synthesize vitamin C in the body. On the other hand, we can de novo synthesize choline in the body. We make phosphatidylcholine from um, uh, through a process that uses methionine, we uh, specifically we take S adenosyl methionine, um, we take methyl groups from that, and we add it to phosphatidyl ethanol amine, which uh, using the PEMT enzyme, um, and together through that process, through a, a, a methylation process, we can create choline. So it's estimated that about 15 to 40 percent of our body's choline demands on a regular basis are made de novo in the liver using this process. What that means is that, and by the way, the, ra the rate limiting factor in this process is the S-adenosyl methionine, which is derived of the amino acid methionine that is uh, found commonly in meat. So as long as you have enough meat, it's quite easy to produce uh, choline in your body, phosphatidylcholine in the, in the liver. Now, this does have some complicating factors. So if you have polymorphisms at the PEMT gene that are problematic, you may find that you are inefficient at producing, um, because your enzyme, your PEMT enzyme is, in, is not working very well, you may be inefficient at de novo synthesizing uh, choline in your body. But if you can produce choline in your body, then you don't really run into too much trouble unless unless your choline is needed for methyl groups through the methylation system in your body. You see, choline is a donator of methyl groups when the body's in need. Specifically, what happens is um, a choline is converted into betaine, B-E-T-A-I-N-E, and betaine uh, allowing the body to use the three methyl groups from choline. Um, and this is done through, a, uh, through another enzyme called the uh, um, mitochondrial choline um, dehydrogenase enzyme. I uh, <laughs> got that right. So this enzyme um, uh, makes the body able to use the three methyl groups of choline and donate them to other places when methylation demands are high. So you can think of it this way. If you have problematic polymorphisms at the PEMT gene, you'll have problems producing choline de novo in your liver, which means you'll need more nutritional choline. Um, if you're not eating enough methionine, probably because you're not eating much meat, again, you may need choline in your diet. So vegans, for example, may need to consume sunflower lecithin, which has phosphatidylcholine in it, to get the choline in their diet. And again, if you have problems with your methylation where either you, you, you have issues producing, uh, finding methyl donors, or you have increased methylation demands in your body, then you may be, take, you may be burning that choline, turning it into betaine and using it as met for methyl donors quickly, causing you to have a choline insufficiency. So this is the reason that it was not so obvious um, that we uh, required choline as a micronutrient until uh, the mid 90s or the early 90s really, but it was recognized in the late 90s by the Institute of Medicine. Currently, the Food and Nutrition Board of the Institute of Medicine uh, recommends that men consume uh, 550 milligrams of choline a day and women consume around 420 milligrams of choline a day. But the thing is, the requirements on choline are extremely, as I've mentioned, very variable. It really depends on your genetics as well as your diet, how much methionine you consume, how many methyl donors you need, and how good you are at converting, at creating uh, choline de novo in the body, and how good you are at finding methyl donors and efficiently using uh, methyl donors in the body. So that's it for this time. Our next uh, section is going to get into the neuroscience of choline.